Hello and welcome to a quick installation demonstration of uh, ArcSight Smart Connector and running through some of the settings that you'll be required for setting one up. Now in this particular example I'm actually going to do it on Linux. Uh, I will be doing one on Windows as well uh, but I just wanted to show the setup process and so on because there is a there is a, a, a little bit of uh, understanding to have but it's certainly not as complicated or as difficult to do uh, as often as uh, is considered. So I'm actually going to install the 64-bit version. I am running as uh, as SU as root on this particular uh, demonstration VM that I have just to show the the process. Um, there is a console mode which I'll show on a different video as well just to show that you can actually install it without having X Windows. But uh, from a, a demonstration point of view, it's actually relatively easy to have it as part of a a, a video here with the with the actual. Um, uh, graphics shown accordingly. Just a quick note here with regards to uh, what we have. I'm actually running it on CentOS. Uh, I'm running it on a particular version that's not quite a fully supported version. So it's actually uh, just double checking whether I am uh, fully support, whether I accept that it's not a fully supported platform. Clearly, uh, in a production environment, I would be actually looking to install this correctly uh, and uh, putting it onto a supported platform. But you know, in this particular case, we'll just uh, skip over that and carry on the install. Now, so we are presented with the uh, the wizard to go through. Uh, where do we want to install it? Now, uh, this is a good question. We probably want to have some sort of consistency uh, with what we have and uh, where we want to install it. Uh, so let's let's stick it into a folder structure that we can use. Now, you would actually install uh, the different number of connectors according to different types of uh, log source that we want to do. In the case of this one, I'm actually going to install a, a syslog connector just to show the ease of the installation process. Uh, but if I wanted to have multiple different types, for example, a Windows connector, maybe even an Oracle connector, I'd just put them into different folders uh, for this, this part of the uh, directory tree. I wouldn't install them all into one uh, because there are different protocols they're using. So we'll carry on the install, uh, having got that. Uh, I could also have a custom install, but I'm actually just going to go with a typical one because uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and again, do I want to create any links uh, for uh, the, the running of an in uninstaller and so on? I don't really care too much on that one, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, finally, it'll just double check that uh, I want to install this correctly, and off we go. So there we go, it's installed the very, most of the components with regards to what we need, so the JVM and the base settings. The interesting thing in the way that the smart connector works is uh, it's just one installer. I don't have a specific connector uh, required for a, a say checkpoint or syslog and so on. You actually personalize it as part of the pro installation process. So uh, I do the installation. In this particular case, I'm going to install, install a syslog one uh, and actually give me the choice of what this connector will be and then I select that and configure it accordingly. So here we go. Uh, let's just shuffle that up there. So we're actually adding it in here. Uh, we can enable uh, FIPS mode if we are wanting to use it in a particular uh, FIPS configuration. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. So let's just add a connector. Uh, and then we're presented with a nice big uh, drop down box of, of what we want to uh, consider to, to use here. Actually, what I want to do is I want to do the syslog one. There's a couple of options here. Uh, if I want it to read a, a file, I can tell it which file. If I want to read a pipe, I can give it a pipe. Uh, and if I just want to have the, the, the daemon receiving this as log data of the network, then I'll select that. Uh, uh, please note that the file and the pipe options are not available on Windows platform because they're not appropriate on those ones. So actually, I want to do the syslog daemon. It's going to ask me some various settings I want to use. So what port do I want to run this on? Uh, what uh, I, IP addresses I want to have uh, assigned to doing this, uh, and uh, what protocol I want to use. So there is actually an option of doing uh, TCP if I want to do that. Uh, and there is actually, I, I could use the syslog ng connector for even doing TLS as well. Uh, and it, am I looking to use this as a forwarder or not? So in this case, I'm actually just going to have it receding, receiving the data and not forwarding on to another connector. Uh, next again, and it's just going to confirm the settings. Um, and of course, I have a destination that I want to send this data to. So where do I want to send this information? So I could actually send it to uh, ESM or Express, or I could send it to Logger, or I could send it to another different types of information here. For example, I can send it over an encrypted syslog channel, or even just raw syslog uh, out again at the back end. Now, in this particular case, I'm actually going to send it to uh, Logger, and it'll pop up the dialog box for what I want to send it to. So I have an IP address. 
uh, a port number I want to send it to and a receiver name uh, that I'm actually going to connect it to. So this is something you would pre-set up beforehand uh, and it, it actually will check the configuration and it is a, um, case sensitive as well. I can also define if I want to have compression on or off. Uh, in most cases, uh, it's usually a good idea to have it turned on, but be aware that actually in very high EPS environments, you probably want to be a bit cautious around that one because it's going to take uh, some CPU cycles to do so. So it's worth just double checking. You can turn on or turn off that on a per connector basis uh, as you need to as part of administration anyway. So it goes ahead and it double checks that the receiver's there, which it is. Uh, it's logical to give it some name for what we want to uh, configure for the connector here. So I'm going to do demo syslog. The location is my VM machine. Uh, VM and syslog. There we go. It then does a registration to make sure that we are uh, registered to use that final destination. In the case of ESM and Express, it will actually exchange certificates if it's valid to do so, uh, and then it will finally register the connector. Again, if we just find a management process uh, for this management communications channel, it'll also register it for there. At this particular case, just for a demonstration point of view, I've set it to use uh, Logger, and we're just sending straight to Logger. So this is a effectively unmanaged connector, which is okay. And then we hit next. Some final settings that we might want to have a look at. Do we want to run it as a service or standalone application? We probably want to run it as a service, so it's going to pop up some information that we want to do. It is a good idea to make it uh, differentiated uh, for a service name so we understand that it's, a, it's the ArcSight smart connector rather than just a normal syslog server. And do we want to run it at, at, at automatically a startup? Yes, we do. Uh, we click next. Uh, next uh, and that we actually have the opportunity to carry on and do some further configuration if we want to so we can actually take a look at that uh, and we get an option of uh, configuring some settings whether we want to enable FIPS actually uninstall the service uh, or actually modify particular settings within the system but actually in this case I don't want to do that so click next uh, and now I just want to exit it then finishes we can see where we've installed it so again this connector is running to that, that particular folder tree, tree uh, under a particular master directory, but I have different connectors under the directory tree I needed. I hit done, and there we go. It's finished the install, and we're ready to go. This is set to run as a service, uh, and we can do so straight away. Thank you very much.